OK, 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 OK. <laughs> That's what you do when you're nervous and you don't know if you're alive or not. OK, OK, OK. <laughs> okay, okay. Tr- Donald Trump dance. But anyway, uh, yes, this is TNT. <laughs> we are open line and we have the one and only John Porter joining us again this morning from the fabulous podcast broadcast, also known as Chasing Descent. John, how is the form this fine Monday morning? Oh, we're struggling. It's Monday morning. It's cold. It's chilly. The climate's on, cold. Man. The politics are cold. Give me Everything something positive. Cold. Come on, come on. Don't be such <laughs> yeah, a what dear, miserable so Scott. Shining. Don't be such a typical Scott, miserable the sun's out. that you are. There's, there's a big glowing <laughs> orb in the sky. I'm frightened. I've never seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Just slap plenty of Factor 50 on because we know oh, that no, you need no. that stuff in Scotland. No. And get the sun shades on and uh, be careful. No, be I don't, careful. we don't do suntan lotion. You need your vitamin D. Have you, did, and this is completely off, the, off topic. Did you see the stupid people that are saying that vitamin D um, is bad for you because they use it as a rat poison? Yes. Yeah, and there was an there was an article last week we didn't manage to cover that they that they've obviously uh, they're telling us in the mainstream media now not to take vitamin D supplements. So whatever they tell do, you not to do, I suggest you go out and do. do. Do you know how many I use international units of vitamin D you would have to take to get the same dose as a rat poison dose? What? You'd have to take one and a half million international <laughs> units. Can you imagine how go- how many gummies that would be? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can afford that. You can't actually. You no, can't no, you can't. We're in a cost of living. Yourself. Yeah. With vitamin D, it would be about 16 million quid <laughs> to get a dose big enough. You'd be better just getting the rat poison and taking it if you were stupid enough, that is. But please, don't do that. Don't be consuming <laughs> no, don't. any type of poison. Now, talking about consuming poison, uh, the, the media, uh, the, the British so-called justice system, John, I want to get your mm-hmm. views on this yeah. one here. There's been a yeah. very high-profile case over the weekend for Sam mm-hmm. Nalea. He's been given two years for the offense of stickering, stickering. Yeah. Yes, you heard yeah. that right, stickering. So yeah. he slaps a few stickers. Some people view it as mm-hmm. offensive, uh, race baiting, one thing and another. So he's got two years in jail. There was another case highlighted over the weekend of a chap called Hamoud al Sumai. Hamoud mm-hmm. al Sumai, 21, a Kuwaiti who was part of a rape gang made up of foreigners in Newcastle. He was found guilty. So he was found guilty in a court of law of three counts of sexual assault and one of an assault on a 12-year-old girl. His punishment was 180 years of community service and no jail. His lawyer said he was immature and he was simply led astray. Now, I'm emphasizing the fact myself that this guy had was a Kuwaiti. He was part of a, a foreign national rape gang. But this is not about race, okay? I don't want to make no. this about race. This is about justice because the bottom line is, irrespective of the race of the person that committed it, here we have a case of a sexual assault, three counts, community service, and another case of stickering with two years. How can anybody standing from the outside looking in say that that is just or that is a just justice system? Well, if if you've got half a brain, Rick, you know exactly what's going on here because if you're a danger to the system, then you're going to get hammered. And if you're, if you're just a danger to the public, then who cares? Really, mm. who cares? You know, because that's point. what it seems to be. And I think, I think we can fix this, right? We can fix this. And I think what we have to do is we have to take it to a higher power. We have to go to the top of the tree. Now... When I say that, you think, well, where are we going to go? Well, who's at the top of the tree? Because if you think about it, everything that's wrong with this country at the moment, whether it be police, teachers, NHS, politicians, they've all got one thing in common. You know, the justice system as well. They've one thing in common. They're all public servants and we are their boss. And I think we have to go to the people. It's time for the people to start fixing things. And it's like it's like Simon said, we need some kind of action. So it takes uh, apparently it takes one and a half percent of a population to change the government. One and a half percent of our population is only a million people. Now, mm-hmm. a million people out, outnumbers our police and army by over half, you know, over twice as much. So. Yeah, I could see that happening. And I think it's time that we actually did 
we took it to a higher power, take it to the people and get the things sorted out because the people we've put in place to sort things aren't doing the job. So they, mm. they should get fired. Simple mm. as that. Now, uh, this this case in particular, I mean, when you think about it, 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 it sounds ludicrous. It sounds like it's uh, made up. It sounds like it's a wind up two years in prison for the mm -hmm. offense of stickering. And that's deemed to be the offense. He put up uh, offensive <laughs> stickers that were, uh, you know, promoting certain yeah. ideologies. The thing is, the thing is that's uh, disturbing about this is it, at some point down the line, it could be you, it could be me, it could be John, it could be oh, somebody else. We could definitely. be in the dock for this. Now, what do you reckon? Yeah, Matt? Is it, is it a shot could. across our bows? I, I was just listening uh, to John and I, I agree with everything he said and it, it pointed out to me that this is what they are scared of. They're realising that there are more and more people in the country at the moment that are opposing government policies, that they think they're incompetent. And that is why they are pushing back so far on anyone that is a threat to them. This Sam Media, I read an article this morning about and this is what they said, far right activists. He comes from a fascist group. Um, I mm -hmm. read some of the stickers that he put up. I don't agree with all of them, but, you know, the way they're talking about him, they called him an extremist, a terrorist. He'd been radicalised, they said, by Gamergate. Now, on the other hand, this other this other man, you know, he was convicted of three counts of sexual assault um, and an assault by penetrations. He was sentenced to two years suspended and two years with 180 hours unpaid work. As, as John rightly said, they are more, more scared by people rising up because one million people suddenly being outside Parliament, they've got to start calling them extremists. They've got to start calling them terrorists because otherwise the government are at threat and they're more scared mm -hmm. that they're at threat than if people are assaulted. And that's the truth, Rick, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It is. One last thing, John, just uh, as we yeah. wrap this up, this is on a little bit of a tangent too, but uh, I saw a, a video clip yesterday from a football match and uh, it was some guy making a, a gesture. I didn't know what it meant at the time, but he was making like an airplane gesture. It was mocking uh, the Munich air disaster that killed the uh, Manchester United football team some years ago. I didn't realize that. I was wondering what's yeah. the big furore about this. But anyway, a lot of people were screaming about that. A lot of people were offended by that, which is fine. But then it showed him being uh, taken away uh, in, I, I don't know if he was handcuffed or not, but he was being escorted away and they're talking about getting him banned permanently uh, from the yeah. game. Uh -huh. I think it's in bad taste, personally speaking, but is, yeah, it, it is. is it an arrestable offence? If every if I walked down the high street today and got offended at everybody who was looking at me the wrong way and saying the wrong thing and making gestures, the, the jails would be full. Uh, where do we draw mm -hmm. the line with this one? Yes, it was in bad taste. Yes, it was childish and pedantic. It's a football match, but you're going to get men yeah. and women there. They're going to be drunk. They're going to do stupid things egged on by their friends. Is this not overkill? Well, this is it's exactly what happens, though, Rick, isn't it? Because you start introducing big laws to protect people and then mm -hmm. suddenly you can't talk about things you know you can't talk about things that happened you know maybe something that an austrian failed painter did during the second mm -hmm. world war you're not allowed to say anything about that if it's negative you know mm -hmm. so so when you start to get restrictions like that it just starts to creep into all walks of life look at count dankula who taught his dog to do a trick and the judge decided that his motives were not were not right. It doesn't matter what Count Dankula said. The judge knew in his head that he knew what Count Dankula meant. And and that's completely wrong. That's it what's the difference between putting that guy with the stickers in jail and putting no huh. uh, what's his name? The Russian guy, Navalny Navalny. What was Navalny. It? what's the difference? Navalny, yeah. Huh. What's the difference between putting that guy in jail and putting the guy with the stickles in jail. It's still overreached by the government. Mm -hmm. It is. And, and as you rightly pointed out, and I mean, it, we've been saying it for a long time, the, the, the answer to this is mass, peaceful mass non-compliance. If enough people get together and that critical mass is reached, well, then it's usually historically proved to be a tipping point for any oppressive regimes, mm -hmm. the yes. like of which we're currently under at the minute. 
on in the British and the Irish government systems. Uh, we've got to put a, a, a pause on here now, John. Uh, we're up to time. Yep. And we've got to take a little break. But many, many thanks uh, for your insight. And that one, as always, uh, looking forward to talking to you and Ben on Wednesday night on uh, Chasing Descent. Not now. Not and I should have be a good invited one. on there as guests. Yeah, yeah, really looking forward to that. So please check out their YouTube channel, Chasing Descent. And many thanks to you, Mr. Porter. And I hope you have an absolutely splendid day this lovely Monday. That Thank it you. Is. You're welcome. So we will be back uh, after this short break here with more stew, stews. Stews, yes, a nice hearty beef stew. No, more news stories on TNT today.